The Security Council summit held on 23rd September concluded, for example, that international peace and security requires a more comprehensive and concerted approach. It also underlined the need to strengthen partnership with all relevant players, including regional and sub-regional organizations. NATO and UN cooperation has emerged out of the exigencies on the ground long before the joint declaration. In my opinion, there is no better area that demonstrates the need. That is, over the years, NATO has moved beyond its traditional geography and is contributing to the comprehensive international efforts aimed at supporting this country. Kosovo and some deepening of political dialogue and practical cooperation between the UN and NATO. I encourage you to be bold and create various regions of the world by NATO would also be helpful for the UN. So there should be some type of proper analysis of the threats and security experience with the UN. Maybe these are already existing, but at least we would like to see. There is an exceptional program to address a critically important relationship which has direct bearing on the peace and security of the international community. And I would like to, to thank both partners in the countries of NATO. Thank you very much. Thank you. say how delighted I am uh, at the presence of so many representatives from both sides of the, that relation. opportunity for us at the NATO Defense College to bring together such a diverse group to enter into a thoughtful conversation with you to share your ideas and views on a subject of great significance to the Atlantic Alliance is of course central to the raison d'etre of the institution I represent. The division Dr. Karl-Heinz Kamp, and you have met also uh, Dr. Brooks smith Windsor, who had the work. So, which brings me to the particular reason why we are here today. It is to join with each of you operation of September 2008. As you are aware, we are four weeks away from the anticipated release of partnership and the comprehensive approach in addressing contemporary security challenges will figure prominently. Both have, in fact, already done so. 
Now also the Madeleine Albright group, as you all often requiring a mix of partners to piece together the diverse elements of the shared strategy. There's a myriad of complex emergencies in the post-Cold War. The relationship between a regional military alliance, political military alliance, I must say, and the diverse civilian and military elements of the universal UN organization has not always been smooth. We should expect some tension as organization and regimes converge in their mandates, tasks, and the use of finite. General Abriel has extensive experience as a, as a fighter pilot studies in national defense. The second keynote address we have this morning is Professor Kaplan of the United States, the enduring of his recent book, NATO and the UN, a peculiar relationship. So without... Uh, Ambassador Pakan, John Oeser, Ambassadors, General Guy, by the Secretary General of the United Nations and NATO. Let me begin by saying that the operational cooperation between the UN and NATO really is a product of a partnership in the making. We still face some sensitivities in our day-to-day -day work. It is my belief that a lot here has to do with the perceptions within the UN of what NATO Likewise, the humanitarian side of the UN family is not always used to factoring in the military in its daily work and is careful not to be seen as taking sides in the field. I argue today, arguably, to the United Nations, which will also have to work with a range of partners to achieve in the broadest sense of this expression. As a matter of fact, this topic was high on the agenda of last week's jumbo meeting in any conflict situation. In truth, we in the Alliance understand that no crisis can be solved without a significant civilian intervention. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here. I have no connections, of course, in the history of NATO. And I intended initially to read a paper of about 15 parts this winter. I'm going to speak freely, if I may, and I hope briefly. But I'd like to start to one. And 40 years ago, in 1969, uh, while the Cold War was still very much in play, I did write a piece for the NATO letter as all of you know, preceded the NATO Review, a book on the subject. But I'd like to begin today with one by what we perceived as Soviet communist. A better since the declaration of 2008 between the two secretariats. Uh, because there are uh, challenges uh, out there in the world uh, that afford uh, our cooperation of the UN uh, and NATO. And uh, NATO is, uh, uh, is um, defining the new strategic uh, concept uh, in, in four weeks uh, or so. And uh, in that strategic concept all these uh, challenges will be defined and uh, the cooperation between NATO and other organizations uh, especially also the UN will probably uh, form a major part in that. And that's why we are doing this symposium to see how we could uh, enhance uh, the cooperation between UN and NATO. Uh, the cooperation, because uh, we expect that it will emphasize uh, the need for uh, more mutual work between the United Nations and NATO. It will also put some emphasis on the new approach, the implementation of a new approach to operations, which we call the comprehensive approach, which is basically uh, taking stock of the fact that uh, there are so many different actors in theater when we are trying to solve a crisis. Uh, the military is one actor, but it's not the only one, and we need to ensure the unity of effort between all actors in theater. And therefore, we need also to prepare before we are engaged somewhere, before we have to deploy to help solve a crisis. And this is one of the, the main emphasis in my work right now in the Light Convention's formation, looking at how we can 
better share, uh, better uh, cooperate with other actors uh, with, uh, with whom the uh, NATO forces and NATO countries will be involved in operations. How do you it's under UN mandate, which mm -hmm. is rightly so. Uh, if you look in the field, uh, you have a very close cooperation between the UN representative, uh, the Secretary General, the UN senior civil representative, the NATO uh, senior civil representative, and the ISAF commander. Uh, and this cooperation uh, is reflected also throughout uh, all the levels of command uh, in the field. Uh, my point is, looking especially into my own transformation basket, uh, that we need to get prepared as long in advance as possible, that we know each other, that we understand each other, the mindsets, the methods, the way we, we, we work, so that we can prepare, exchange ideas, exchange lessons learned, exchange some planning methodologies, things like that. But when we deploy on day one, we are more effective. So currently, to be more precise uh, on your question, uh, I think the cooperation is good, but my objective is to prepare for a better cooperation upfront in future operations. Uh, for future cooperation, because uh, I mean, everybody says that uh, future conflict cannot be resolved uh, by the military alone. The military plays a major part, but we need all these actors, and of course, uh, the UN, uh, as well as other international organizations like the EU or OSCE, uh, play a major part in this because they can provide uh, much better the, also all the civilian uh, capabilities that we would need in this, as we call it, comprehensive approach together. And, and so we have to set the prerequisites and that's what we are t discussing today. But uh, some it depends on the circumstances uh, of a conflict or of a crisis. And uh, it's, it's the nations, you know, uh, who have to decide whether they want to act, whether in the UN or, or whether in NATO. Uh, but uh, so, so I cannot predict whether we would would act more, uh, whether NATO acts more or the UN acts more. What is clear, I mean, the UN is the international organization of the world that uh, gives legitimacy uh, also, of course, to, to the NATO missions. And, and uh, NATO, of course, is very much interested to follow this line. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.